Hello everybody! So today is day 54 of uploading a daily video Monday through Saturday. Uh, the date is March 24th, 2023. So here we continue with our studies through Greg Shorthand and today we continue or actually we are finishing up our section on the S, the S strokes and you can see I believe it was mentioned in one of the earlier sections that S is one of those sounds that is a uh, uh, very very prevalent in uh, in the English language and so there are a good many ways that s can be used so without further ado let's go ahead and get into this where we will be working on sections 51 through 55 today so here we go 51 and uh, through 50 so here is section 51 this is s between strokes when a circle vowel immediately precedes S between strokes, treat the S as belonging to the preceding consonant. If the circle follows the S, the S should be treated as if it belongs to the following consonant. When S occurs between strokes and is not joined to a circle, write the S with the syllable to which it belongs. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So when a circle vowel immediately precedes s between strokes so we have cast for instance and uh, the circle uh, if the circle follows the s then s should be treated as belonging to the following consonant so in this case cast would have the um, the circle vowel it preceded so that means that the writing style uh, will belong to the previous consonant so in that instance you remember that cast belongs to the preceding to the preceding consonant which as belonging to the following consonant you know to be honest this one i tried to figure it out once and i really i really don't know exactly what they're saying so let's just write these out and see what we get so we have cast, we have cast, so the motion is a right hand motion for the S, guest, once again also right hand motion, taste, so taste, now this one was written with a left hand motion, and that was Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm seeing exactly what they're asking for, but we'll just practice writing. Sometimes it's just good to have a guide, even if you don't know exactly what they're talking about. And then you just try and figure out what the stroke is supposed to be based on the example. So that's missed and then mask. Grasp. A seed, like to a seed a point. So, uh, seed, chest, vast, visit, do it right next to this one, visit, least. Risk, make sure the R is a little bit smaller than the L. Risk, pressed, raised, ransack. So, what would be an example? Treat the S. If the circle follows the S, the S should be treated as it belongs to the following consonant. Okay, I, I can see it here with ransack, for instance, because our, our rule is after an N, N, M, uh, then S is to be written with left hand motion. So we see here that the circle vowel is following the S. So that means that S now takes on the characteristics of the K 
and the K stroke um, is to be written forward motion. Uh, there is no, what was the rule for that one? Do you remember? I should have my book here. I should have the, the rules memorized, but I don't. Oh well, go back and watch the video and figure out exactly what's going on there. So we will not worry about it right now. Right now, we are just practicing the strokes, right? Just getting better at being able to write these out. I'm sure we'll come back to the rule, or the rule will come back to bite us, one or the other. All right, so that takes care of 51. That's S between strokes. So once again, I'm just going to read it off. When a circle vowel immediately precedes S, immediately precedes S between strokes, treat the S as belonging to the preceding consonant. Okay, so what that means is it takes on the characteristics of the writing of the previous consonant. If the circle follows the S, the S should be treated as if it belonged to the following consonant. So that is, if, if so the circle vowel follows S, then treat the S as having the writing characteristics that are associated with the following stroke. Yeah, when S occurs between strokes, and is not joined to a circle, write the S with the syllable to which it belongs. So with that, you simply look at where, which of the syllables gets the S value, and then you apply the writing stroke to that particular value. So that's all I'm going to say about that. So here, so that was 51. Now 52. The SES, or SES sign, the SES sound as heard in faces, is expressed by joining the two S's in a blend. So senses, for instance, has the N, so sen, says. So you just do a slight curve of those two S's in opposite directions. We have cases. So cases. Uh, masses. So case, just by itself, would have the curve going in like that, right? Because, what is it after, what's the rule? It's after, after, is it KR? No, it's, it's PB, PBR and L. It's to be written with left motion. And if it is after N, M, T and D, it also is to be written with left hand motion. So K and G, that is to be, the S is to be written with right hand motion. But if you have two of them together, then you put a curve in the opposite direction. Okay, so SES is take whatever the current value of the S stroke is, and you just put an S stroke in the opposite direction to that. Okay, so that's cases. Then we have masses. I'll have to do it up here. Masses, uh, ceases, thesis, traces. Uh, I'm going to run out of room. There we go. Bases. So notice, just curve in the opposite direction. Census. There we go. And analysis. Uh, nah. What's this? And that's it, right? We did traces. Yep, excellent. So the note here at the bottom, hopefully you guys can see that. But it says, in rapid writing, the first S in SES may become, obs may become obscure. And yet, the second S, being written contrary to the rule for writing a single S, clearly indicates the plural form. So you compare the writing, such as face and faces, right? So face is to be written with uh, right-hand motion. So faces, S is curved in the opposite direction. Lease and leases. So lease and leases. There we go. So now that is the first slide. So let me go ahead and transition over to our next set of slides. And that will be 53 through 54. 53 through 54. So let me go ahead and pull that up here. 53 through 54. Okay. So 
Hopefully you guys can see that well. And these are brief forms, brief forms, and then the plurals of brief forms. So this really is the culmination, well, I should say uh, in tomorrow's video, um, uh, we will be going over the X value, which is bears some similarity to an S, but this really is the end of our S uh, values, at least for right now. I'm sure we'll get some more clarification as we go forward. So let me go ahead and pull that up here on my side. There we go. So these are the brief forms. So this is just some more review. These brief forms are to be memorized uh, because they occur with such uh, regularity. So we have under and the note for under, the sign for the prefix under written above a following character is used for the word under. So like under the or under it, you would simply write under and then it like that. Okay. So it's written above the line of writing. Um, let's see here. Then we have must, ms, some, sm, such, sh, first, business. I don't want to take too much room further down. Then we have cause, cause and also because and you've seen that a lot in the drills cause thoroughly so that's e it's actually a thorough thoroughly it's a there and then an e so there thoroughly uh, think or thing is the th with an little dot sis or system Public or publish is PB. So I'll put that over here. There we go. PB, uh, we have far or favor. FA. Work is the RK. Uh, part. PT. Matter. Matt. Again. Uh, we'll do that here again. What else? Against, so that's just against. Uh, and then finally, always. All less. There we go. So let's see here. Then we have uh, the suffix thing is expressed by a dot in the following words. So anything is just ni ing, ni ing. Something is sum ing. And everything is everything, like so, All right? Plurals of brief forms. The plurals of brief forms ending in S are formed by adding another S of the same motion, of the same motion. So this is different from our, uh, uh, our previous section where we do the, if we're doing an SES, then we have it in the opposite direction. So in this, in this instance, you simply add it of the same direction. So they show us cause and causes. So this one would be cause, and this value would be causes. Business. And I'll let you figure that uh, abbreviation out on your own. All I can say is that there is a lot of that that goes on in business. Okay, so biz, business and businesses. In other brief forms, the plurals are formed by adding S to the singular forms. Thus, uh, parts and changes. So we have in other brief forms, the plurals are formed by adding S to the singular forms, which means that they would have the same rules associated with them as well. So we have parts, like so. Changes, ships, and forms. All right. So that concludes uh, today's video on uh, Greg Shorthand, part of our daily video challenge. If you like this content, then please consider giving the video a like. Uh, share it with your friends. Um, so uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and, and join me as I continue to present uh, 
the little bit that I know of shorthand, and you can see that it is very little, but learning a, a little bit more day by day, really enjoying the process. So thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Now go out there and practice some shorthand.